Hey everyone, I hope you are all well. Today I am joined by Jules. Hi! And Jules runs a channel called From Foreign to Familiar. From Foreign to Familiar. I met her here in Iceland. And yeah, we just became friends ever since then. And met at a conference. We met at a conference. Yeah. We met at the Reykjavik Internet Marketing Conference. Yes, Rimp. Back. Uh? Rimp, get Rimp. Rimp. Yes, Rimp. <laughs> <laughs> Jules was there with her company. I was there alone. I just I was looking for conferences to go to. And I found this conference and I was like, I have to attend it. And that's good how we met. thing she did. Good thing I did, yes. Yes. It was a really good conference. Yeah. I think so. We thought it was about time to collaborate on something and uh, that's why we're bringing you this video yeah i couldn't do this video alone when jules suggested making some content i thought okay i know the perfect video to do and it's a bit controversial so you know you gotta take you have to take this the right way but i feel like this could this could actually be helpful yeah for absolutely. those of you who actually want to get an icelandic man as the title goes, this video is called How to Get an Icelandic Man and we're just going to be sharing experiences. a few tips, a few dating experiences. It's not just about how to get an Icelandic man, it's actually us sharing our dating experiences and our what we've learned about the culture here um, in Iceland. Since you and your husband are now married, I think it's to say, safe to say that you have an Icelandic man. Yeah. And the reason I felt like this would, I, the reason I felt like this, <laughs> got him. The reason I felt like this would be an interesting topic is because dating and relationships here are, um, the culture here is pretty straightforward in the sense that everybody knows how it goes. This is kind of what we've learned is a standard. And that's for everyone. It's not just that yeah, the I women like, are expecting something other. They're also like kind of in this culture too. Yeah, just see, yeah. see how it goes. And see how it goes. Came here when you were married, didn't you? Yes, I was already married when I arrived in Iceland, but I'm from New York. So I think yeah. in New York, like, it's a kind of similar culture. Mm -hmm. And there's not really, at least not for me, I don't, I don't really care about yeah. other people's judgment. So not having a relationship or it leading into a relationship yeah. is totally fine with me. So I was pretty happy to know that in Iceland, that's the way it goes. Because okay. I was like, and that's how it happened with me and my husband, actually. I guess we can dive into all of those things. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. like we knew each other for... We met 10 years ago, actually. No. Yes, when I was in college, we both were in college. He was in college in Iceland. Yes. And I was in college in New York. And we have a mutual Icelandic friend, yeah. Orre, who is going to school with me in um, RPI, mm -hmm. school. And yeah, he introduced us because he had Icelandic friends coming over to visit. And we were attracted to each other, but we never did anything then. No. We just stayed friends through Facebook because Facebook came along at some yes. point and blah, blah, blah. Uh, and it wasn't until many years later that we ended up being both single at the same time. Same okay. <laughs> and not bringing up any homes, people. No. And then we decided to meet up in Chicago. Because mm -hmm. I'd never been to Chicago. He lived very close yeah. to Chicago for a what we thought would be a friends with benefits weekend. Oh, okay then. So yeah, I mean, we totally were like, it's like hardcore Icelandic style almost. <laughs> Which weirdly enough, in the Midwest of the U.S., where like Bible Belt people having yeah. so much judgment because he was in Indiana studying. So it's just like, that's not the typical way that a female would act there because they're so afraid of being judged. But I am not like that. So I was just like, cool, let's do this. You know, I had no expectation actually that I would be married to an Icelandic man. This is okay. Like this is something <laughs> maybe I wanted to talk about a bit like as we go along. Um, but yeah, it's an interesting story. Yeah. I don't actually think I heard, well, obviously you wouldn't tell me that like first day. Hi, hi. Let me oh, tell you how I met you. my boo. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's pretty interesting. And I'm glad you had a success story with that. Yeah, and I think part of like when we'll and talk you about weren't this, so afraid of judgment because no. I feel like I've lived in fear for so long. And that's, I think, is what is helpful with any person you want to be with is to not have too much expectation at first. Meaning like yeah. just let it flow. You know, and that's, mm. I think what happened between the two of us is that we just let it flow. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden we realized we clicked really well. Yeah. And here we are. I would cl class that as a success story. That's why I brought Jules yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We have a few points, but um, expectation versus reality. Did you have any expectation of like, oh, this is what an Iceland is? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, it was funny enough because Gunnar, Mm -hmm. looks like what people think of as a Viking when yeah. he grows his beard out and stuff. And he had long hair for a long time. Yeah. But when I was visiting once, people would 
say to him, like, can I take your picture because you look like a Viking? I was visiting Iceland. And I was just like, this is bizarre, but um, I don't know what, what else to think besides Iceland and Icelandic men, yeah. then, you know, they Viking. kind of kind of come off as this like Viking, you know, probably tough guys. But I was just coming up with this in my head. Like Ore, who is our mutual Icelandic friend, he was really cool and, you know, we hung out and had parties and stuff. I know they like to drink. I, I was very aware of that. Yeah, but some some don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well. some yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah, my yeah. husband doesn't really drink that much, yeah. like hardly ever. Mm -hmm. So it's just you know, you you build up these thoughts in your head either. Oh yeah, from, sorry, expectations. Yeah, yeah. Right? And it's just like when you come, you're just like, wow. I mean, they're people who have different personalities. Yeah. Weird. Don't know all the same. It's so easy to paint everybody with the same brush when you research before you come to Iceland. Like all these points, like people are like this, and cultures like this. Okay, a lot of things are true, but yeah. you cannot like pinpoint those facts or statistics on. It each person that you meet. Yeah, and yeah. Iceland has been absorbing so much culture from other places, like media. So even though they keep really strong traditions about certain things, mm -hmm. they still are really into watching like YouTube videos or whatever else, so, you yeah. know, so they'll end up putting a spin on like something from the UK or something from the US. Yeah. And so it's like you're not expecting to come here and be like, what? You what? guys are into rapping. Yeah. Let's rap and, it. and yeah. reggae. And reggae. You know, it's just like, oh, I was not expecting that. Mm -hmm. And it's mostly like I these like slanted guys mm -hmm. who are just like and of course the women are doing their own things, but it's it's hilarious to see like this Icelandic reggae band. I was like, okay. Okay, cool yeah, I would like to see that actually. Yeah. I would like to listen to their music. <laughs> I will share yeah. it with you. For me, I tried to have expectations, but I realized there wasn't much out there for me to like, you can't go on Google like, oh, Icelandic men. I couldn't place those expectations mm -hmm. on the people here because everybody looked so different. Yeah. Everybody acted so different. Everybody was their own person. And you came without having, you came to live without having I came having to, visited. without even having visited, yeah. Which is a big so, leap in itself and mm -hmm. quite a brave thing to do, might I add. Yeah. Good <laughs> for you. I was like, yeah. I, I visited like four times. I was like, okay. I can do this. I, I like it here. Right. I know. Yes, you know. I braced myself. Mm -hmm. The only thing I really placed expectations on was like the nature and the surroundings and things like that. I just felt like I would have to get, I can't, I can't make presumptions about people. Right. Absolutely. I tried not to do that. Yeah. Which I is a good way yeah, to live life. <laughs> which is a good way to live life. Yeah. So I try, I just came with a very, very open mind and just intending to get to know each person individually. But now that you've been here, now that I've what's been the here, reality? The reality. <laughs> the reality of dating. I've only met guys in one particular way, which is through Tinder. And Tinder is the thing that most people use. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Yeah. Unless they have like an Icelandic one that's in Icelandic. Like, I, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Which I don't know about. Yeah. I don't know about any Icelandic dating website. Yeah. But so that's why I was on Tinder. And um, I didn't date for when I first, actually I was talking to somebody like for months before I came here. Really? Yes, but he became more of like a friend okay. and... It's good to have Icelandic friends. Yeah, because for some reason I always used to like, I always, I never really focused myself on meeting someone in England because I always knew that um, I wanted to go somewhere else. But it's like anytime I'd, I always change the tone. So the tone would always change from romantic to just just becoming, being a friend. Just being a friend, yeah. I always change. <laughs> and they're like, what happened? What happened? <laughs> yeah, I just decided to change the tone because then I realized that, because then I would put too much pressure on myself and mm. um, I would feel like, no, I shouldn't, I should meet somebody serious. And you can't mm. put that much expectation on someone right. straight away. Yeah. And, and to be fair, I think. And in, also expecting perfection as well. Yeah, that's the realistic expectations. Oh Anywhere is good, but in Iceland, like there is because there is this culture, right? Yes. Of just like seeing how things go. Seeing how things go. You kind of have to like either assimilate to it or you'll find yourself really frustrated because it's just everybody. I'm not saying everybody is like that. There are plenty of people, I'm sure. Well, plenty mm -hmm. of people. There's only like 300,000 people, but yeah. there are some people, some men mm -hmm. who are probably looking for probably well, looking for serious, serious relationships, relationships yeah. initially, right? It's just. Again, being able I've, to find them yes. and knowing where they yeah. are and, you know, I don't know if Tinder, I, I know people have had relationships off of Tinder, but is it still a website where a lot of people are looking for hookups, right? So It's still that. It is yeah. still that, yeah. 
But so the expectation already from the get-go might be like, okay, so Tender, I just need a booty call, right? So let me go get that booty call. Yeah. And then, you know, we'll see what happens We'll from see what there. happens after that. My dating experience, um, I didn't just date at the start because I was still getting myself sorted. I was still trying to figure out everything. But then when I was like calm and when I was just about to move here, I was like, okay, let me meet somebody. And I started talking to one guy um, on Tinder and for some reason I was just so exhausted mm. I said I can't text I'm sorry just call me um, just call me at 9.30 tomorrow and he actually called me which I was quite surprised nice. about and he was actually a really really nice person we met up and he was like okay so when the next day it would be nice if we could go you know to the countryside or something like that it was like nine days later or something oh wow okay yeah That's so quite, wow. because I was working so much and he ended up meeting somebody in that space of time and I was like okay I was still on and he said no my relationship status has unexpectedly changed <laughs> <laughs> I met somebody else and we had a, a simple day you know um this is this Joe and the Juice guy or no no this, okay. is not <laughs> <Joe and the laughs> this is not Joe and the Juice guy <laughs> the dates have been very simple nothing has been like extravagant dinner or um like is that something that you expect no okay because that's helpful all right this is like in, uh, to, I said that's helpful especially if Yes. The idea is to just flow with it. Dinner would be nice, but I think coffee is very casual and it doesn't put pressure right. on anybody. Absolutely. And uh, it's been really helpful for me, especially when I meet the guy and I actually don't think I'm not, I think I'm yes. not interested. Oh my gosh. Then I just duck. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and I just duck out. I find these guys tend to talk about their families a lot, which I really like. Yeah, they are extremely family oriented. You are not one of those people that mm -hmm. wants to go to a ton of family functions. Like we go to birthdays, coffee. Yeah you know, brunches mm -hmm. all the time. So that is just, Very that is life family. here. Life yeah. is all about family. Yes. So you have to expect that mm -hmm. once you get into that relationship, yeah. you were just, everybody is part of your family. Everybody is part of your family. Yeah. That's their social, outside of like their friends, but that's yeah. their social network is really yes. like the family. Yeah. So it's always interesting to see like what kind of family they come from. Most of them mention the fact that, oh, my parents didn't stop talking about his family, his da dad. He had so much admiration and Aww, adoration for his respect sweet. for his dad. So I think it's a typical it's thing too, right? Yeah, yeah. You know? But it's here it's like you have to fight the elements and do all this stuff, especially if you had like a father who is very strong. Like mm -hmm. my husband's father yeah. was a carpenter. Yes. So he's just like one of those individuals that's really good with his hands and, you know, can build things yeah. and he's not alive anymore. but. Like when we go, when I was first coming to visit, he'd be like, yeah, yeah my dad built this shelf. See how it's like flawless. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's just like, it's really sweet. Though. It's really it's sweet. Like, yeah. Wow. Like you really, you know, mm -hmm. love and admire this person like you're saying. Yeah. One of them told me that their parents had been married ever since they were 16 or no, no, 18 years old since then. Yeah. yeah. I could imagine so I being like, married oh. at 18 years old. Yeah. No, I could not. You, oh, sorry, you no. couldn't imagine. No. no. No, not 18, not 20, not 25. Uh, my grandma, no. I think she got married, or maybe everything married life started for her at 17. Oof. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. I was still a baby. 17. I know it too. I was. Just, I hadn't even. I was a yeah. baby. Mm -mm. Yeah. <laughs> I can't even go into like just thinking about my 17 year old self. Yeah. <laughs> like, first of all, I was like almost allergic to men also when I was. I couldn't even. Conversation. I would like. I always used to think to myself, if I got into a relationship, I, didn't, I wouldn't even know what to say. <laughs> yeah, right. It's just because you're. I was so focused on other things. Other things like sports, and sports, life and, life and school, yeah, and that was it. Getting. Until I became eighteen, then all of a sudden I, I went like, away to college, hmm. and I was like, yes. <laughs> and was like yes. so there was a click in my brain. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Have you ever felt like you've pressured yourself into? I want this relationship. I have to find it. I have to mm, find it. Yeah, once. But it wasn't with an aesthetic man. <laughs> no. It was with some other guy. And it just felt so weird later on when I thought about it. Mm. Because it didn't feel good. And like the person was also leading me on. Right? Yes. So it was like he was divorced or separated. Mm -hmm. And you know, he's like, oh, but I have to say all these feelings and blah, blah. And I was like, OK, so maybe we stop talking. He's like, no. I love talking to you. And it, like, it just like kept me like on the edge there. Oh my gosh. And that was so terrible. And that was, I, I didn't realize how gullible I came across mm. in believing this individual's crap, basically. But yeah, it's, it can happen to anybody. You just, your mind, sometimes when you're yeah. really infatuated with somebody, 
you can let yourself do things that you ordinarily would be would looking do. back and be like, girl, get your life together. Get right? your this life is not together. okay. Yeah. Have it, has that happened to you? Yeah, it's happened to me before, actually. I, and all the time he just kept talking about how he wanted this girl, woman with this um, athletic body, mm. or he just was like still on the dating website. Just kind of not really taking me seriously because broken relationship or broken engagement in the past and Wait, because you someone had one? who is no because he, he had, had one. one yeah and he was like much older than me I just felt very attached um, and it took me a while to even block him yeah it does it's like there's something <laughs> mentally it's like the person crawls into your brain like a little every day I would be parasite checking. right and it's just like and it's like controlling your brain almost it's yeah. so weird the intention for me at the start was like I was taking it seriously and yeah. it came at like a perfect time when I was like making decisions about myself and I just thought oh perfect timing when they were kind of like thinking you know looking for the perfect woman so even mm. though the timing was right they even told me you know the woman for me would need to be perfect and I just that was not at the start. Oh that's a terrible thing to hear because it's he yeah. asks, are you the perfect man? Are you the I perfect man? I doubt it. I doubt he was even close to the perfect man. And that's another unrealistic expectation. Yeah, that's really but I just found like, I was just like, why did I limit myself? Mm. It's a lesson. If I could have just set myself free. Yeah. But you know better now, right? I Thankfully know, you didn't, I mean, I don't know how long it went on, but regardless, it's over. And you now realize that that's not what you want. You don't want people trying to spoon feed you things so that they can yeah. have power over you continuously. They kept messaging me like every night, even on the very dating website we met. Wow. And I was like, that's a big insult. Yeah, uh, this person sounds like I they said, have a lot oh, of insecurity. I said, oh, you've had my... Okay, let's not talk, go into yeah. it. <laughs> let's We've gone off a total We've off topic. We've jumped off a cliff. Okay, so now the fun bit. How to get an Icelandic man. What do Icelandic men say? Yes, I've written down, maybe you could ask your husband what Icelandic men look mm -hmm. for. Did you ask him? I did ask him. You asked him. I it. was curious about what he was going to say. Yeah. I'm like, what do they say? What do okay. they say? <laughs> and he basically said, because he obviously has very many Icelandic male friends mm -hmm. and he's an Icelandic man. Yeah. So his response was interesting. Okay. It had a lot to do with having obviously being attracted to the person at first, yeah. right? So that I think is a base level thing for most people. But then being able to have fun with the individual, yeah. like kind of like you know, humor, things yeah. like that, um, being able to feel relaxed around them. Yeah. Iceland in general is not a place where people are freely sharing their emotions. No. So I feel like there is, especially with guys, and if you add on like this bravado that most guys walk around with, and here in Iceland, I mean, there's the land of the Vikings, right? So they, yeah, they have this. Man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So they like, they try to like, a lot of them try to live up to this. And so there's a wall, there's a blockage there mm -hmm. that I believe a lot of them have. Um, listening guys? Yeah. <laughs> listening girls? I mean. So it guys too, you know? Being kind of open to, you know, possibilities, but also just being relaxed and being able to be someone easy to be around. And then we, we talked about earlier expectations, mm -hmm. right? So just like let all of that go. And I'm not saying just to like do what someone else wants you to do. But, no, no, you know. no. <laughs> you know, have your self-respect. Right. But you don't put pressure on people. Right. Don't put pressure on people, on yourself. on yourself. You have to go in here and be like, I'm going to have a, this, a boyfriend in three months. It's like, that is not how relationships work. Not, not good ones anyway. Like, mm -hmm. because if you're deciding, you know, or this telling this individual, well, we're going to be together. I mean, this has happened, of course. Wow. Right. Okay. And this happened in Iceland, actually. <laughs> yeah. uh, so a story of um, Gunnar's ancestor. Mm -hmm. So I think it was either his grandmother or something like that. Yeah. So Gunnar's just named my husband. And his ancestor wanted to marry this guy who was a chef for, like a, for the yeah. Danish king. Yeah. And so she ended up writing, because she was like 15 years old, so she wrote a letter to get permission from the Danish king to marry this person and like actively pursued him. So this is Icelandic woman going after Whoa. an Icelandic man to be like, you're mine. Right? You're mine. So this is like back in the day though, like many, many years ago. Mm -hmm. I don't believe this will work out very well now. Because yeah, we recently like, had a story about something yeah. similar. So yeah, yeah Stalker I think, alert, I think. right? <laughs> <laughs> very different and yeah. just I think for your own sanity you don't want to put yourself in a position that like for your own sanity yes peace is so important it just is. keeping yourself cool I think when you start to get desperate it's mm -hmm. just like gives off a very bad vibe and being 
able to like you know just see what's out there is a very freeing thing too right mm -hmm. like there's obviously there's benefits to having relationships there's, but there's also benefits to allowing yourself to let come to you and put out energy that you want to come yeah, to you yeah i've so it's like that in Iceland too, but I think the barrier sometimes is just quite, it's there, right? Like with the emotions and yeah. wanting to commit and things like that. And maybe, maybe there's my Sonic man who watches this and is like, Tabitha, I've been thinking about it all the time. Oh my gosh, imagine. Girl, I didn't know you were looking, right? Like, you can never know. So. <laughs> Someone said that to me. I didn't know you were looking. I was like, but we met on, anyway, okay. You never know. I mean, you people know. sometimes are oblivious to things. That's another thing, too. I mean, you might be on somebody's radar, but maybe they have. You know, they're not fully aware yeah. of what, you know, how to approach you. So maybe this will open up for people yeah. the ability to, to approach you. Yeah. You're putting the energy out there. You're letting people putting know. Putting out there. You know. How to, not only how I'm to available. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just no. And she's lovely. Aw, thank you. Yeah, I've had some weird people in my inbox. <laughs> Putting the right energy out there. Mm -hmm. I believe in that Absolutely. as well. I believe in that a lot. Yeah. Because I feel like when you're putting the energy out there, it's like you're doing it in almost, not really in a conscious way, but you're just making sure you are okay. I don't know, you're making yeah. sure you're, you're comfortable. Yes, and, actually, and as that, you work on yourself. As you work on yourself. That energy also transfers to other people. I believe that. Yeah. I was going through, like, I went through a huge breakup with a guy before Greenland and I got together. And he also went through a huge breakup. So the two of us were in these places where we needed time mm -hmm. to be single. Yeah. And I think it was he broke up with someone in February. I had broken up with the person in November. Mm -hmm. So by the time that May came around, we you were, were very different headspaces. We had been chatting since, like, March. Yeah. Again, like, we were just, you know, calling each other and stuff like that. And I was the thing, he was a good friend of mine. So he became a really good friend that I was telling everything to because I had no expectation that we were going to be together. Yeah. So I was just like, yes. It's about like, I went on one date um, yeah. and it was the worst date I'd ever been on. <laughs> and it was one of those things where like I ended up buying the alcohol for us, like just one beer. Yeah. And the guy was like, oh, great. We should go to this other place. And so we walked to this other place and he tried to kiss me on the street and I didn't like him. And I was yeah. just like, no. no. And he got really awkward. And then he, we kept walking, and he's like, okay, well, I'm going to go home because I live right over here. Mm -hmm. And I was like, did you just have me walk you home, right? Like, I'm just, I and know. I bought the beer, and you were supposed to buy me a beer when we go to the next place. And he's like, no, he's like bailing on the date. And I was like, ah. Oh. So I ended up telling good enough about this, and he was just like laughing, and, you know, we were just making jokes about it, not expecting that you know, later on mm. in a relationship. So that was, I think another base thing was just having um, a person I could have fun with and chat with yeah. and feel comfortable. I think you've maybe, th uh, all that time that you were talking, there was, you, you'd you built up trust. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. A lot of trust. And that's, I think, you know, you just never know as well, yeah. like who you're talking with and how that can become something later, you know? Like you never want to just, I, he was in other relationships obviously and I was in other relationships. He'd gotten married before. Mm. So I, and I met his wife and his mother before before they <laughs> I ever knew she would be my mother in law. Like this wow. is so you know, really crazy to me when I think back on it. But so fascinating, you know, mm -hmm. that like people's roles in your life change. And yeah. in Iceland, I mean it's such a small community and it probably happens pretty often here. So Icelandic men, like, you know, maybe that's kind of a part of it too, is like they know that if you're going to come into their circle in a mm. relationship, it's a big deal. Like yeah. everybody knows everybody here. Yeah. So unless you are dating an Icelandic man outside of Iceland, the freedom kind of feels a little bit different here. Mm. Because a little bit, knows everybody. everybody knows everybody and you're constantly bumping into people that mm -hmm. you know or that you've met before. It's, yeah. yeah, it's pretty funny. It's pretty funny, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But I think it's, we're quite lucky in the sense that we don't have to go on this app and check if we're related. Right. It's too close of cousins. Oh, too close right? of cousins. <laughs> like, no. no, no. And I've had people um, thank me. They're like, you're helping diversify the gene pool if you ever have kids. Yes, thanks for that. It's like, that is not my intention. So don't no. worry about it. <laughs> yeah, it's been, thanks for sharing. So guys, you know what um, an Icelandic man looks for now. Just, that sounds like friendship to me. Yeah, friendship and, you know, let it develop. Let it develop. Yeah. And it, it's not to say that everyone will start like that, but how nice is it, though, to know that you could be in a relationship with someone that you also consider your friend? That is perfect. It is. It's yes. really nice. It's 
very nice. Questions, I have some questions for you. Okay. So Jules, at what point did your husband decide this is the woman for me? Mm, I was thinking about this. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because I have to give you a little bit of backstory. Yeah. So he was in open relationships before mm -hmm. we got together. Yes. And that was not something that I wanted to be involved in. No. So when we had that weekend in Chicago, my mind was set on we're not going to be together because he probably wants to be in open relationships and mm -hmm. that's fine. So I'd already in my mind decided that we were just going to go our separate ways, maybe keep in contact. Mm -hmm. you know. He took me to the airport and we we're sitting there chatting. And he turns to me at some point and is like, I would like to be in a monogamous relationship with you. And I was gobsmacked. Like literally, I didn't know what to do. I was like, I had already prepared for this not to be together, right? So, I was just, so in, the, in the moment, I was just kind of staring at him like, for real? For real, for real. <laughs> yeah, and like, yeah, and I was like, oh my God, okay. We're gonna do this. And he's like, yeah, we, we, do you want to do this with me? And I was like, yes. And we lived in different places. So he lived in Indiana, I lived in New York, yeah. and we just, I think for months, probably the three years that we were in a long distance relationship, mm -hmm. we were pretty amazed. Three years. Three years. There's a direct, there are direct flights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Yeah, so he went from living in Indiana to Maine, then moving to Iceland. So he was in Iceland for at least a year yeah. before I moved. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I was, Every time we were just like, wow, we really still love each other. I want to be this. And like, oh, wow. and not that, you know, I mean, I don't know why it was surprising, but it's just interesting to know that you can make it work if you want it. So I think, I'm not, I don't know if that was like, there is one moment you can say, but yeah, I think but there I is. I feel like you, okay, yeah, but he vocalized this. Yes. Rather than slowly getting rid of the other. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and I never like, said to him, if you ever want to be in a relationship with me, yeah. you have to do this. Like no. I never expected him to do anything but what he felt was right. And yeah. I always expected that he felt the same about me. So like, he's not going to push something on me that I didn't feel comfortable yes. about. And that I think has always made our relationship beautiful and strong and super helpful for me yeah. because just knowing that the person wants the best for you, they want you to be your best self. Mm -hmm. And that's what a relationship should be about. I believe so. Bringing out the best in that individual. Yeah. And that's how I've always felt and I continue to feel. So. Mm -hmm. It's good and you feel like you're still going strong. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we had our trials and tribulations when I moved to Iceland and that was because it was the first time we ever lived together. Of course, there's like that assimilation. Yeah, oh my God. Period, yeah. <laughs> like, like, you're married, just like yeah. that's together for better or for worse. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, and it's better. It's know? better, yeah. It got, it got to a point where like, we just had to change how we communicated. Very nice. But before it was like, you missed yeah. the person so much that they did some little thing, you didn't really care. Mm -hmm. You saw them, you wanted to spend every possible moment just yeah. like being with them and mm -hmm. not caring about anything else. And then when you live together, you have tons of time. Tons of <laughs> and all of a sudden you're just like, he does annoying things. And like, you know, same about me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you could just blow up at each other. We'd never been into like a, a really intense argument before. No. So yeah, it was it was fascinating and fascinating, yeah. really helpful. Good, but um, you mentioned that your husband was previously divorced. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess when to you an Icelandic woman, so he, to an Icelandic he was woman. woman, yeah. I guess a lot of people tend to when they see divorce, they get like turned off or they think that oh maybe he's he wasn't a good husband or something mm. but you didn't allow did you allow that to affect you or anything no when i got to know good enough he is a very sensitive beautiful soul so he's not i don't know he just he's one of those people who like shares what is going on with him which is very helpful yeah i'm the one actually that like when i get annoyed about something or if i'm feeling kind of strange mm -hmm. i don't I, I close up yeah so it's he helps me to kind of bring out the communication part yeah. where it's hard to talk about things mm -hmm. and he's a psychologist also so i think okay. like he in general has this ability to connect with people so i didn't think of it as oh my gosh you must be a terrible husband or not no, marriage yeah. material mm -hmm. or failure you know it's like gosh. you already have like people already are walking around with this baggage and i prefer not to put, to put more baggage on right it. yeah i like put labels yeah. on people when you get a fresh start. Like it's a new day. It's a new, you know, like yeah, sometimes it's even better to marry a divorced person because then they've realized what the mistakes they made in the past. Right. 
and how they um, and they want to make it work this time. Yeah, and he married in his 20s as well. So there's like a young aspect, okay, they were yeah. in school. There's so much to it that's just like, I knew I wouldn't have been able to marry someone at the time. Mm -hmm. Because I was just all over the place with worried about my career, what I was gonna do, like bills. Like, you know, it's like for the first time yeah. I pay bills, I was like, oh, <laughs> like I'm not worried about a dude. And, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I was dating, not dating, but like maybe in a relationship, but yeah. not in a like, I think the relationship I had when I was 25, I was not, interested in even the guy like moving into my apartment yeah. so I was living in New York and I was like he's like oh I can move I live in New Jersey I was like no you can't <laughs> I, said, like, yeah. I got my space yeah. <laughs> so, like, so things like that like mm -hmm. you have to be in that mindset yeah okay so another question what heads up advice would you give to a woman entering a relationship or somebody who's just entered a, a marriage with an Icelandic man like is there are there like things that you you feel like are essential for them yeah. to know? Yeah, I think being open to the culture because if you're, especially if you're like from a place that is not Nordic related yes. at all, there are things here that are kind of odd, right? So like <laughs> there are the, like the fermented food festival or, you know, just celebration of things. You're just like, you wait. What's you, the point of this? You're eating <laughs> until you explode. Like, why is this a thing, you know? So like, so it's just being, open-minded about the fact that Iceland comes with its mm. seemingly peculiar things. Yes, like, does your husband, like, uh, shark meat? Not really, no. No, no. you've never tried it. I've tried it. So before I was vegan, I tried it. Okay. And yeah. it's nasty. Okay, yeah. I don't care anybody says it's nasty. It's horrible. I tried it before once. Yeah. I couldn't, did I even swallow it? I couldn't I, swallow I it. I can't remember swallowing I'm, it. I have a video of my sister and me, my mom, yeah. and yeah trying it and we all like we're like oh my god and i had i spit into my hand and it's like ammonia Ooh. and i my hand it's i washed it so many times that day and it still had like a, a stench coming off of it and i was like oh, oh. maybe we'll do a video um, trying icelandic food again maybe yeah. you know, we probably well i mean because you're vegan well now. yeah there's but. certain things i wouldn't eat but there are some really good ones mm -hmm. yeah so yes um people do like strange food you yeah. kind of have to be open to that and if you're going to move to iceland being open to learning the language so language is in terms of the culture it's very strong here like they are very proud of their language they're proud that it's an ancient language it hasn't changed since i think the 1200s so there are like very strong connections to language nature people like all of that comes together and when you come out to Iceland, like you, you'll really feel that. And yes. there's like almost to me, like a magnetic pull on yeah. this island, right? Mm -hmm. And especially it, it reaches certain people who are open to it and it just like draws you in. Just knowing that Iceland is being with Iceland person, you're kind of connected to this history that's so fascinating. Yeah. And Icelandic men, you know, of course, everyone has their flaws and they're not all the same, but we're gonna generalize, so whatever. Yeah. But you know, again, like there's this interesting, legacy and culture and I think that is something that is it makes the relationship kind of extra fascinating extra fascinating yeah. I find they do tend to know a lot about history <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah they're really well read really well read like um, in Christmas yeah. they so they have this thing called the book flood and they everyone like gives each other books for Christmas as gifts like mm -hmm. this is a part of the culture so literary wise they have really rich culture yeah yeah, that's good. Thanks for that advice. Yeah, my pleasure. Yes, and uh, so okay. take taking a, a book with you on you know your next date. Is take like a book. <laughs> <laughs> I should take a book with me. Right. Okay. So final question to the jewels: What is the best thing about being with an Icelandic man? Um, do you feel it's much different to your previous relationships or experiences? Yeah, absolutely. I don't think I have only one relationship I ever thought about moving. <laughs> this one you've actually moved I this. moved here yeah. mm -hmm. and I love the fact that family is such a huge thing yeah. and I've just I love his family and his family loves me and mm -hmm. that has been so huge to feel like I am a part of the family you know I'm a black woman living in Iceland and yeah. this family treats me like I'm just a woman that he loves mm -hmm. and is part of the family so that you know being with Icelandic man is nice i had been with people who were in the US who were white and it's different you know there's like history and whatever there's else history. and you're just like ah. oh. so like not having that history mm -hmm. especially as a person of color coming here and knowing that that's not how they think of people of no, color it's yeah. it is so nice it's so freeing it is so freeing and i walked on the street and i'm just like you know people were looking 
it's a different story. But I don't think they're looking at me menacingly. I never assume that. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Like, Although I do have a tendency to look at them too. <laughs> what? What oh, happened? What? Do I have something in my face? And it's like, yeah, apparently your skin color. <laughs> <laughs> apparently. So, yeah. But I, I think it's, for me, being with an Icelandic man, being, um, what do you call it? Exposed. That's what I'm looking for. Exposed. Being exposed yeah. to this culture. Like, you really dive into it when you're yeah. with an Icelandic man or woman, but like in this case, we're talking about Icelandic men, so mm-hmm. you really dive into being in the culture and they love their mamas, which is yes. so sweet. It's very good. I love my mama, so it's it's really nice to know that there's a lot of respect. I've noticed that and mm-hmm. I really, really like it. Yeah. It's a lot of respect for parents, yes. yes. And they know how to party. So that, I'll give you a big thumbs up for that. So I think we are gonna conclude. I hope this video has been helpful for you. Thank you so much, Jules, for joining me. Thank you for having me. And we are gonna be recording another video about our experiences as black women in Iceland. So (laughs) I will leave a link, a direct link to that video underneath this video in the description. So make sure you go straight away and check that out and leave your comments um, on Jules' video and make sure you also subscribe. Make sure you're subscribed here so you can keep up to date with me and make sure you turn your notifications on so you never miss a video. Follow me on all my social medias so you just kind of know what's going on. I hope to collaborate more with you, Yay! Jules. Yay! We live in Iceland. I know, exactly. <laughs> awesome. When I, actually, what when I first noticed Jules, I noticed her hair first. Yeah. <laughs> she, was wearing an she was wearing a big afro. <laughs> and you have such nice curls. Thank you. Yeah, I think you did a twist out or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah at the conference so it was really nice okay so all right guys i will see you in my next one